Pediatric movement disorders are a kind of a wide variety of different kinds of involuntary movements. Most of the movement disorders we see in children are things that make children move too much. So we call those hyperkinetic movement disorders. And when we talk about involuntary movements, we can think of them in groups. Ticks is one. Ticks are brief, quick, repetitive movements and sounds. There's another type of movement called chorea. Chorea is an unpredictable wiggling kind of movement. That's what we see in adults who have Huntington disease. Dystonia is stiffness that fluctuates and has abnormal postures. Myoclonus is a quick jerk-like movement. Tremor, so people have different kinds of shaking. There's all these different kinds of reasons why people have tremor and then that tremor will have different qualities. If a parent is concerned that their child may have unusual movements or involuntary movements, I'd recommend that um, first probably the thing to do is to reach out to the pediatrician because there are some um, very common kinds of movements that can look quite alarming. If pediatricians are concerned about particular involuntary movements that they're seeing, especially if it's things that are causing patients a lot of problems, or if it's something that's very unusual and that they can't, that they haven't seen before, I think that they ought to have a low threshold to send them uh, to see a neurologist and if possible, a, a movement disorder specialist. Movement disorders are diagnosed perhaps a little bit differently from other disorders in medicine and many other disorders in neurology in that most often we're trying to categorize the movements based on things that we see with our eyes. And then once we can categorize the movements, then oftentimes we'll order laboratory tests or imaging uh, that can be supportive. The treatment is going to depend on what the symptoms are. Sometimes we have conditions in which we've got a really high success rate in making symptoms be a whole lot better with something as simple as taking a medication or in some cases even using a behavioral therapy. And then in other situations, the types of movements that people have may be more refractory to those kinds of treatments. So we may need to do things like um, injections, um, or sometimes even um, brain surgery. Sometimes we use something called deep brain stimulation surgery to treat things like um, some of the genetic dystonias and chorea's. One resource that I've found to be very helpful is the website clinicaltrials.gov. Oftentimes, some of the challenge is putting a name to the disorder, um, but once we do have one, then the next challenge is that there may not be a treatment. So um, frequently we'll be checking that website and I encourage parents to check that website and see if there's uh, something enrolling that's started enrolling for, for their particular condition. Particularly when we're talking about our children, I think um, getting in front of a professional and just telling them what you're afraid of, uh, I think can, can really be helpful because it can be a tremendous burden lifted uh, if someone can tell you, hey, that's that's not what's going to happen at all.